and welcome to Whiskey and Wool. This is my Knitter's Life series, which is a new series that I'm doing for 2021. This is episode 19, um, and it is almost Halloween. It is almost the end of the year. So I have a lot to catch up with you on because my last regular episode, I think, was if not four weeks ago, a month ago, it was five weeks ago. <laughs> welcome, welcome to my channel and I hope you enjoy this little catch up on things that are all things knitting, all things fiber. Um, I have some knitting whips, whips, finished objects to show you and at the end I have a little bit of lifestyle stuff. It's going to focus on some fun products that I got um, that are not yarn but products I like. Um, yeah, so thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a beverage of your choice, whether it's warm or cold, based on your weather. Our weather is fall-like today. It is. Uh, it was quite chilly this morning, which was exciting. Um, it's. I love sleeping in cold, cold temperatures. So, um, yeah, it was really quite cozy laying in bed this morning. <laughs> You're going to see some footage, and you may have already seen some in this episode that will show you the transitional season that we are in. Um, there was there were times in the last month where I was wearing shorts and sandals, and other times where I was wearing sweaters and pants and shoes. Um, and you're also you'll also sh you I believe you will notice it in the foliage. So I'm going to try to put earlier foliage in. Um, images from the garden early and then towards the end it'll get more and more progressively fall like right outside my window in my living room which is directly in front of me there is this beautiful maple that just puts on such a show in the fall and um, just a couple days ago it was all green but now it is starting to turn gold and red it is really spectacular um, I don't know if I have footage of it per se, but I'll be including some at least next time because it's about to peak and it is really gorgeous. So I am going to start off this episode the way I start off all episodes, which is with a gin or whiskey chat. Generally it's whiskey because this is whiskey and wool. However, viewers encouraged me to include Jen um, because I had said one episode many months back that Jen is actually the thing, the alcohol that I drink most frequently. Um, whiskey is more of a special occasion and I think it, a lot of that has to do with price points. So Jen will cost half or even less than half of what a bottle of whiskey will cost. But I also really like the flavor. It's refreshing and tasty and yeah. Anyway, if you're not interested in that chat, I will tell you where to skip to on screen, but I can also tell you that they run about 10 minutes. Um, this time around, I'm tasting Fellows Gin and it is a clip that I will be filming later today. So I really don't know much about it right now. So I hope you enjoy that clip. And again, if you're not interested, skip ahead um, about 10 minutes and you should be good. Hi, I wanna do a little gin chat. I just wanna say quickly, I really appreciate those of you who came up to me at Rhinebeck and said, you've been a little light on the whiskey lately. Because <laughs> I have been. Um, I have been doing a little bit more gin and then there's been a couple episodes lately that I just haven't had time. It does take extra editing and research to present this segment. So I really deeply appreciate those of you who love this segment because I know I can see in the analytics that not everyone watches it and that's fine. Um, but I'm doing this for you because you have told me how much you love it. So um, yeah, let's get into it. I'm tasting a gin today. <laughs> um, yeah, so in my Rhinebeck episode, I shared this gin, Fellows Gin, that I 
got from Hudson Valley Distillery. They are located in Claremont, New York, which is in the Hudson Valley, uh, offering up their entire line, which is um, a vodka, a gin, this gin, a rye whiskey, a bourbon, uh, and then some pre-made cocktail batches that you could buy in a bottle. I don't know why they're not selling these around college campuses because it seems to me like uh, they'd be a real win because colleges, college students don't usually have uh, the funds to buy all of the ingredients to mix. You know, they end up drinking really weird concoctions. These are pre-made, they're great. Um, I ended up not buying any of those. I just purchased the gin so that I could share it with you. Um, the bourbon and rye were also quite good, but uh, I, I thought that the gin was actually the most unique that they make. So I've poured a bit in my tasting glass here. You can see that it's clear. It's just a clear liquid. Um, let me tell you a little bit. They do have a tasting room. They, um, uh, in their tasting room, they also have on offer, um, a variety of local beers and ciders. Um, the company is also, uh, women, veteran, and LGBTQ owned. So, um, I don't know who's who in that mix <laughs> and how, how many of those things intersect in the same person. Um, just putting it out there that that is another thing that they're known for on their website they don't have very much about their process so one would assume that their processes for making all of those spirits is very similar to the processes that other distillers use so there I, I would take away from that that there isn't anything unique to their processing. I think what's unique about their gin, though, is the ingredients, what they use. So their gin is grape-based. So most often gins are some sort of grain-based. So they're either um, wheat or barley-based. Uh, and they have this defining characteristic of juniper, particularly the UK. So UK gins must have juniper, a certain amount of juniper to be called gin otherwise it's just vodka flavored vodka or something like that so um in the u.s we're a little more flexible on that um i think we kind of let the distiller decide whether it's a gin or vodka because they are pretty much made in a very similar way the difference is that vodka tends to be um minus botanicals so it's just the alcohol uh, without the strong botanical taste that you get with gin. Okay, so Fellows Gin, let me tell you a little bit about it. It um, The price is around $35 um, for this large bottle. Uh, I've never seen it in my local store, but maybe uh, it will, you know, be around soon, or maybe they're, you know, they're slowly reaching out um, to stores, local stores. Um, I'm sure I could probably find it in upstate New York, but, uh, you know, who knows? This is, so what the website says about it is that, um, it is subtle on juniper with more emphasis in citrus, lavender, and cucumber. Now, when I was tasting it at the booth, I was told there was rose in it. Um, I, and I love the taste of rose, like rose tea, rose ice cream. I love those flavors. So I was excited there was rose, but I, it doesn't say that it's here. Um, it just says other botanicals, but nevertheless, let me taste it with you and tell you what it is that I'm tasting. And then I'll share with you a professional tasters review. Okay. So right off the bat, I smell a lot of citrus. I would characterize that as kind of a lime, mostly li predominantly lime with a little bit of orange and lemon, but mostly lime, like very strong. There is some flower smells in there. Lavender for sure. And something else, maybe orange blossom. Let me taste. Wow, okay. So it has, I think it's because it's a grape-based 
uh, spirit that it has a full fruit flavor right in the front. So you get this rush of like a slightly sweet fruity flavor followed by those um, piney, juniper, citrusy tastes. And then at the end, there's this just this strong sort of citrus slash alcohol burn. There's something in there that reminds me of cake, but I'm not sure why. <laughs> it could be that there's a little bit of vanilla in there. Um, that might be what's coming. This is so good. Like, I, I mean, again, oh, I didn't explain, especially if you're new here, because I did get a bunch of new subscribers over the past couple weeks. Um, I, when I'm tasting either whiskey or gin, the process is to pour yourself about one ounce and then put a sprinkle of water. You could put as much water as you think you need, but I usually just take a little water on my fingers and drop it in to the glass. That helps open up the spirit and helps you taste and smell all those nuances a little bit better. So that's what I'm tasting. It's relatively, it would be pretty close to what would be considered just a shot, but it has the water in it that helps cut the alcoholic burn that you would get if you were just doing a shot. Um, okay, yeah, so let's see what the experts say about this. Um, I'm reading from tastings.com, which is the, a spirits review website. They say clear, color, aroma and flavors, sappy pine, rosemary, honeycomb, fruit cake, fruit cake. Ooh. So fruit cake is a really <laughs> familiar taste in whiskey. Um, round out bright dryish medium body and a charming mid length finish evoking notes of pl good and plenty candy. Oh, so that good and plenty candy, candy, that <laughs> <laughs> that sort of licorice flavor. Oh, that's super interesting. Um, and also prune and an anisette cookies, edible flowers, pepper, and chalk dust. A somewhat dusty, grainy, uh, Ginevere-like gin for sipping on the rocks. Hmm. They're recommending that you taste it and drink it on the rocks. I will have it with, my usual way to have gin is to um, put it on the rocks and put a splash of soda and sometimes even half soda, like more soda, like seltzer soda or club soda would be fine as well. Um, that's my usual way to have a gin cocktail. Just put like a fresh herb sprig or a slice of um, citrus, either orange, lemon, or lime, depending on what type of gin I'm drinking. So yeah, that's a, it's interesting. This has, um, some notes that you normally find in whiskey. Um, they're also saying that there's a little bit of a rubber glove smell. The licorice, the good and plenty candy is a good way to put it because it's anise. It's sort of that anise or anisette, um, flavor, but sweet. Not just that licorice flavor, but like sweetened licorice flavor. There's a lot of like sweetness to this gin, and I think that it, it's because of the grape, the strong grape. Um, yeah, I think that is about all I can share with you about it. It is um, it's definitely unique and interesting. I uh, find myself going back to... Um, UK gins over and over because I really like London dry style. Um, but every once in a while, I do like to try a unique American or other, uh, you know, global styles just to, you know, see if there's something that I can hit on. I really loved the gray whale gin. Um, and that's been a regular for me lately. So, uh, yeah, anyway, just wanted to, uh, share that gin with you. I hope you get a chance to try it and perhaps or perhaps taste a unique gin of your own. And I will see you next time. back.
While you were away, I noticed that um, you really couldn't see Martha very well. You didn't see her whole sweater. Well, she's still a little bit off screen. I can maybe pull her in closer. There we go. How's that? <laughs> okay, we are sitting in the crafty corner of my very large living room. I have a, a spare bed actually right behind Martha where sometimes my adult children sleep when they stay over. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a massive room and uh, yeah, anyway. Save that for another time. Actually, you'll probably see some imagery of that in my Vlogmas videos, which I do Vlogmas. Um, I've done Vlogmas for the past three years. I'll talk more about that when December gets closer, about my uh, intentions for what I will present to you. So, but let's, you're here for wool, right? This is why you skipped ahead. <laughs> Let's talk about wool. I have so many finished objects to share with you, not the least of which is the one I am wearing. Uh, this is the, I hope I'm saying this right. I should really look it up, but I think it's Mesa sweater, Mesa sweater by H Hannah, Hannah Rittman, Reinman. It's all on screen for you to see. Um, she is a Norwegian, I believe. It could be Swedish. I'm so bad. I'm sorry. I'm really usually, I'm usually not this bad. Um, it's been a while though since I finished this sweater. Um, but anyway, free pattern. Uh, not a great size range in terms of not really size inclusive. I knitted, this is the second largest size um, and it is called extra large. I did not I, you know, I'm not usually an extra large. I'm not an extra large commercially. Let's put it that way. I, I, I am somewhere between medium and large. I usually just buy large because I want um, lots of positive ease in my commercial made clothes. Um, so, yeah, it was surprising to me. I, uh, I will put a picture on screen of what this looks like instead of like getting up and dancing around in front of the camera. I prefer to just put a picture on screen for you to see. I did make a couple modifications. Um, one that's probably most obvious is that there was an entire, um, this repeat of color work should have been on the sleeves, but I was running low on yarn. So this is all the black that I have left. It really, I did not think it would be enough for both sleeves. It might've been, but I didn't feel like playing yarn chicken and I think it works just fine with just a little bit of the black and white rib that's here instead. I don't know if you can really see the ribbing but it is two rows of pearls, two, sti two pearl stitches and then one knit stitch. The two pearl stitches are black, the knit stitch is white and that is how the top neck is done as well. Um, I think this is probably one of the most sophisticated and elegant looking sweaters I have ever made. I really love the yarn. So I love I, finding that like perfect blend between yarn and pattern. When you, when, when it's right, you know it. Like it's just like, oh, this is perfect together. Um, that is one reason why I often try to, um, I, I, of late anyway, I have really tried to match whatever the designer said she used because or he used because they used because that really means that those two are meant to work together generally um i've certainly as a designer made mistakes in my yarn choices with the pattern that i'm going with and you know it happens totally fine um what is the yarn you might be wondering it is rama phenol It's a Norwegian yarn, um, very popular in Norway, this Rama line. Um, they have several different lines, uh, Rama. So this is Phenol, this is their fingering weight two ply, I believe. This was a new color in 2020. It is a heather color. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see like the little bit of gray there and some white. Um, I bought a sweat, what I thought was a sweater's quantity. I actually ended up not using all of the yarn. I bought six skeins. I could have done 
fine with just five. This is what's left of the fifth skein, so it's pretty much most of it. Um, so that that's kind of interesting to know. I did this is a little bit more cropped than it would normally be, but even so, if I made the normal length, I probably could have um, gotten away with just five skeins. So that was that was good for me to know. Um, if you're new here and you don't know too much about what my size is, I am. This is Martha, my mannequin. She is exactly my size, and uh, it, I highly recommend buying your own mannequin that is exactly your size. Um, the way I got her to be my size was I measured myself completely in uh, all of the measurements that were available for mannequins. I think I have a video about how to measure yourself, which you can watch. I did it a couple years ago. And then what you do, so what I did was I made sure all the hard, unmovable measurements matched me, and then the softer horizontal measurements. Horizontal measurements you can make bigger, you can't make them smaller, so you want to err on the side of buying a form that's a little too small. Um, so anyway, I put one of my old bras on her and padded her out because that was the place where I did not match the hard form. Um, and so I just padded her out until she got to the size that I am. So um, it's really awesome to have a form. I don't know how I got off on that digression. I'm sorry about that. Um, it's really awesome to have a form that fits you so you can put um, the sweaters on that you're knitting or any, if you're a sewist, things that you're sewing, just to make sure that they fit. And it gives you a chance to take a step back and really take a close look at all the fit issues that might be occurring. Um, and I'll talk about this sweater in a minute. It's been so useful having a mannequin for this particular sweater. Anyway, um, yeah, what else can I tell you about the Mija sweater? Um, I really, really love it. I haven't worn it much because I always try to not wear my sweaters until I get to show them on the channel. Um, it's super cozy. I love the crisp hand of the of the Rama yarn of the um, this yarn. Oh, another mod I did besides the eliminating color work on the sleeves, I also did a straight body. The pattern has some waist shaping in it. I just skipped that. I didn't really think I needed it, especially with today's silhouettes of sort of a loose pant and a crop-ish body. Um, I am not comfortable sharing or showing uh, my midriff at all. So I do like that silhouette though. Um, I just wear that silhouette in a way that my skin is all covered, whether it means wearing an undershirt or a camisole underneath, or just making my sweaters a little bit longer. Um, I'm doing both today, wearing a t-shirt and it is a little bit longer, but it still gives me this nice boxy cut, which I like. So yeah, so this is one of my finished objects. Um, I have to think back to my last recording. I think I had said that I was tr really trying hard to finish this sweater and this sweater before the Stephen West knit along came along um, because I knew that I would be wanting to try to keep up with the release of clues and uh, I wanted these two sweaters off the needles. I was almost successful with this. Um, I'm going to stick with finished objects for the moment before I jump over to whips. I finished knitting the stocking for my daughter-in-law and uh, it's time to embellish it. So I thought I would um, just talk you through what I do. Um, so I have purchased a bunch of, uh, you know, more, way more than I need um, little felted pom-poms. I guess I don't even know if these are pom-poms. I guess they're just balls. These are pom-poms these sparkle, these like silver sparkle things. Um, so yeah, I have, a, I have a bunch of different sizes and colors of them. Uh, yeah, anyway, the silver ones, I got them all on Amazon, I think, or maybe craft stores. I've had these quite a while, um, probably since, t for about a decade, I'd say, but yeah, so my process for this is to just um, do this. So I thought maybe it might be fun to watch or figure out, help me figure out. I mean, I think I'll probably go with some sort of random setting of, you know, 
these different pinks and throw in some reds. Something like that. Okay, so I think this is going to be the layout of the the little felt balls. Um, yeah, so just one sparkle. And then you can see like all of the other glittery sparkle. Oh, and the last thing I will do, I will attach uh, the yarn main color. Oh, actually, I'm going to use the pink. I forgot. I'm going to use the pink. So, But I'll be attaching about right here on the stocking and then crocheting. A chain that I'll then loop up and make three um, three folds. There's my my helper. <laughs> so I'll make three folds, and then each of those uh, dangly crochet chains at different lengths down here will have a pom pom stitched to the end of it. So yeah, that's the plan. Um, so another finished object that I have, I have been working on Christmas knits. So this is a Christmas stocking that I made for, let me hold it back here so you can really see it, that I've made for my daughter-in-law. Uh, last Christmas I made um, stockings, I made one stocking for my granddaughter who was a newborn. And I told my son and daughter-in-law that I would make them stockings this year. So this is uh, my daughter-in-law's stocking. It says mommy on the top in Spanish because my daughter-in-law and son are both Hispanic ethnically. And uh, yeah, so is my grandbaby. Anyway, I this is a pattern of my own design. I really love the way it came out. I knit it out of Loopy Mango Dream. The yarn is called Dream. It is, I think, technically a worsted, though I would say it's more like a bulky. Um, it is a very lofty merino yarn. It has a tiny bit of nylon in it, um, but it, wow, it is really, really beautiful. I think also the flex in the tweeds are, there might be a little bit of viscous in it. I'm not really sure. Um, the little pom-poms that I got are, um, or that are on here, I just sewed using a needle and thread. They are commercial made felted pom-poms. Also the pink, in all the pink yarn there is, a, I held it a, together with a thread of metallic, um, yarn. So yeah, really, really love this. You're going to see more about these stockings in the coming episode or two because I am uh, reworking an old pattern that I designed about almost a decade ago now, about eight years ago. Um, I designed a bunch of, I'll show you here, I designed a bunch of these using a different yarn, a more commercial yarn called um, Brown Sheep. And I actually, I have what I would consider three different versions of Christmas stockings. One is just very plain with pom-poms all over it. Um, and then in the same pattern, there is a stripe, a mono stripe or a, like a dual stripe, two, just two colors stripe. And then there's a multicolor stripe. Um, so that was one pattern. And then the other pattern was the same sock shape with um, snowflakes. And those two patterns, different snowflake um, versions and stuff. Those two patterns are available. They've been available for a very long time, for at least five years, and they um, are written for this uh, Lamb's Pride Brown Sheep Wool. Um, it's a little bit bulkier than the Dream from Loopy Mango. Um, I have always had, <laughs> at the same time that I made those patterns. I've always had these different motifs um, made. I just never published the patterns. So this is another one that has a snowman and then um, a bunny, a bunny pattern. Um, same, same sock. So I've, I'm reworking these intarsia patterns for stockings this year. Um, and I am reworking them using Loopy Mango Dream um, Merino. And that pattern should be out, I would say, about mid-November. So maybe by the next time I record, that pattern will be published. Um, it will have those three motifs. So this is the same tree, just reworked with a different yarn. Um, this does require a little bit more stitches on the needles. Um, 
yeah, it's really, really fantastic. I did modify the toe a little bit in the pattern, which I'll talk about on this next one. <laughs> so my son wanted a polar bear because uh, this one isn't quite done. It's missing its, its uh, tab here to hang and then also its frills. Um, my son wanted a polar bear on his stocking and he, it says Poppy on it, um, which is daddy in Spanish. And uh, yeah, so this is the polar bear, which I think came out terrific. Um, this, the, just if you're thinking about, you want to, you know, maybe get the yarn and if you're thinking about making this pattern, it takes a skein and a half of the main color and then less than a half a skein of the contrast color. Um, you can do lot, um, every two row stripes here in this section of the foot if you want. I decided not to for this. You could also do contrast heel and toe if you're a, you know, a skillful sock knitter. This is heel and flap sock pattern basically. Um, with a fold down cuff instead of a rib cuff. Um, you can choose to do letters or not on the pattern. Uh, I, you can see on my older pattern, I never put the names on them. Instead, what we do is we attach a tag, a name tag on each stocking because we found that people like to change which stocking they have every year and they get a little jealous sometimes, especially the kids. So, um, yeah, so it kind of gives opportunity, equal opportunity to all the kids. So yeah, this pattern, when I release it, will have the tree, the polar bear, the snowman, the bunny, and I'm planning to do one or two different reindeer um, motifs. So I think I'm gonna do a stag head and then also a silhouette of a full deer um, on, you know, on the front right here. I think I might do two staggered, maybe a big one and a small one or something like that. I haven't figured that part out yet. Um, what I might do to release the pattern timely is um, release what I have graft. So I do have these intarsia patterns grafted as well as the bunny and snowman. I just have to rework them for this weight, this gauge. And uh, I wanna knit a sample of them as well. So I may release, I might release these and then maybe add the deer, the stag head and deer later. Um, I just wanna to bring to your attention too, I did modify this toe from this toe. So this is the toe that the pattern will have. Um, just very, very slight change in uh, the length of it, but I think it looks proportionately a little bit better. Um, the frills for this, stocking will have it'll be white with a strand of gold metallic going through it just to kind of tie back in the gold lettering that's across the top on my granddaughter's um on her stocking i use gold lettering for hers too so since she's named after my son i thought that would be that would be fun um yeah yeah so my son is named julian and my grandbaby is called Juliana, which I just love, especially because um, the baby's last name is my daughter-in-law's last name because my son is a feminist. And uh, she, so she is kind of the perfect blend of, in terms of her name of both parents. So she has her mother's last name and her father's first name. So it's perfect, perfect. I'm so proud of them. Um, okay. Back to knitting. <laughs> Another finished object that I, I think this is new. I had it put aside. I usually like put a stack of things um, together as my weeks progress in between episodes to, I just kind of compile them. Um, but I think these are new. This is or a new finished object anyway. These are the spark socks uh, that I recently newly finished. Um, with spin cycle yarn in the colorway Evil Eye, which was left over. I had about a, I would say like 80% of a skein left for from my, um, my Illuminate sweater. So I used that and it was plenty. Um, I did put, I used a strand of no, mohair to um, 
add stability and strength to the heels because this heel, the back of the heel is probably the place that socks are most prone to um, wear out. Um, the main color is a Teeny Button Studio color. It's just a pale purple called uh, Rose Myrta. So yeah, and you can see they're not identical, but they're close enough, I think. Um, the toes don't exactly match, but I kind of like that. And uh, yeah, they were these. This was a slow knit because it is color work, and I also uh, use socks usually lately of late to kind of carry around with me when I'm going places where um, I think I might have some time to just like do a row or two. Um, so yeah, these were rather slow, but yeah, I'm looking forward to wearing them. They look super cozy. Is that all my finished objects? Yeah, that's all my finished objects. So without uh, waiting any longer, let's go ahead and talk about what Martha's wearing. Um, Martha is wearing Spots by Anne Venzel. She is a Danish designer. Um, her patterns all come out in Danish and sometimes are um, also, I just realized something, the yarn this yarn is looped up over the shoulder for some reason. So I was like, why is it up in the back? <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so this is Spots. Last time I showed it to you, I had finished the body and I had started a sleeve and I needed to um, finish the sleeves. So after I finished the sleeves, I blocked the sweater um, because it was looking a little snug to me through the bust in particular. And uh, also the construction of this pattern is a little different from what I normally do. Um, it is a raglan sleeve, but the raglan construction isn't what I would consider traditional raglan construction. It was kind of, I almost want to say, I don't think it was she intended it this way, but it seemed a little lazy to me because you were decreasing every row, every other row or something like that. like. You increase the entire length of the raglan sleeve very consistently, which isn't something that I notice most raglan construction has because most raglan construction, when you're coming down the neck, you do rapid increases and then you kind of smooth out the increases so that the slope isn't quite as angled. Um, so this one didn't do that. It was very consistent um, increases throughout this seam line you increase at the same rate from the top of the neck down to the armpit. And it makes for a really kind of angular, almost masculine shape, I guess. Like it's not, it, it works fine if you're not making a fitted garment. So if you're making something that's going to be loose and boxy on you, it looks fine. And you can see in the pictures that I'm gonna put on screen now of Anne's patterns and some of her variations, you can see what I, th I think you can see what I mean. Like her, the fit of some of her sweaters were was much looser, more positive ease than what I ended up with. And um, I mean, I think once I blocked this it does look a million times better it fits me fine it's got less positive ease than I hoped for but it still nevertheless still has positive ease it's just a very thick knit because you're knitting this entire thing holding two strands so um, you know I I think the patterning the color work is so smart looking and she has like many different versions of um, all over color work like this. Very stark graphic colors, gorgeous. And then she also has ones that are just so messy and they're just like a ton of rainbow colors and they're beautiful. I so wanna make a scrappy version of this. <laughs> Um, the yarn itself, the main color is, uh, or the main yarn is a strand of merino sock yarn held together with a strand of mohair. Um, she also has a version written in the pattern where you hold three strands of mohair together. Um, my particular yarn is a sport weight yarn. It is by Camilla Fiber Company and it is, let's see if I have some handy that I can show you. Um, it is a... Yeah, here it is. It is a very pale blush color. I don't remember the name. I'm going to put it on screen. <laughs> but I bought the matching mohair. 
Um, this is what I have left. Um, I won't have this much left by the time I finish um, the body. What happened was I had the rib right here and uh, I had the pattern calls for a half inch of rib and this was just too short for me. I just wasn't sure how much growth I was going to get and I also was trying to embrace this idea of that crop silhouette um, and I realized at the same time I was working on this one I was about the same place in this one too because I was um, you know working my way finishing the body doing the sleeves. I was working on four sleeves at once for a while there um, and I realized that I really enjoy the length of this green sweater better so I ripped the ribbing out and my intention is to add two more repeats of the motif so it'll be this long plus a half inch or so or three quarter inch of one by one rib um, so it should end up being about this long which is going to look so much better on my body to me anyway um, I also knew is also the neck. It's a folded neckband in a one by one rib. The um, rib on the entire garment is half twisted. So you're twisting, you're doing a twisted rib stitch for the knit and then a regular purl. Um, a full twisted would be where you're twisting both purl and knit. I did use a sport weight instead of a fingering weight, which meant that my gauge was off. Um, I ended up knitting down a couple sizes, so this is technically the size small that I'm knitting. Um, when you do stuff like that, you do need to make sure that these vertical measurements are going to work for your body. So I ended up doing fewer um, rows of the armhole yoke situation to just keep the um, armhole from dragging too far down, too low down. It is um, in a pretty good spot. The bottom, the armpit is actually right here. So it's got about an inch, inch and a half clearance from the bottom of, from the armpit down, which is, I think, really great. I think it looks good. Um, it looks the same pretty much on me that it does on Martha. Um, Martha doesn't jiggle and I do. <laughs> That's really the only difference. Uh, yeah. Oh, the color changing that you're seeing there that's happening in the pattern is a result of some hand spun that I'm using. So this is hand spun yarn by me. Um, it's one of my early hand spun sweater quantities. Uh, it, is, it is called Hearts Beguilement and it is by Countess Blaze. Sorry, I had a little alarm go off there. Um, hopefully you didn't, hopefully I cut that out and you didn't hear it. Uh, it is a Coriadale sea cell blend. So sea cell is made out of a plant fiber. So, uh, it, interesting blend. I like the yarn just fine. I just was new to spinning and the yarn itself is a little bit ropey because I was learning how to spin. So instead of making an all over sweater, I thought as color work, it would work well. Um, there were sections of the yarn that had, uh, or the fiber that had a lot of blue, this pale baby blue, and sort of this seafoam green, sagey green, which is coming through right here um, in it. But I really, really love the way it looks here in, um, in this Spots sweater. I think this is the fun of the Spots sweater. And I mean, the scrappy versions are really, really spectacular. Um, the only other thing I would say about this pattern too is that the sizing isn't all that inclusive, um, but uh, like I said, I'm a 40 inch or 39 inch bust. I don't know if I said that actually, but yeah, I'm a 39 inch bust. So I'm kind of in the middle of most size ranges. And uh, if you size up the way I did, you'd have a lot more latitude in terms of making a bigger size than what the pattern's written for if you just like switch up to sport weight. So that's a good strategy if um, ever a pattern isn't quite sized the way you want. I mean, Anne does some really terrific, fantastic patterns and I've, I, I do regret that the patterns are not on Ravelry because I, I really struggled a lot with the beginning of the pattern um, doing the increases the way she tells you to was a little unconventional and I ended up about after struggling I just kind of wrote my own notes and you can read all about the the um, changes that I made in the pattern in my uh, Ravel on my Ravelry project page and if Ravelry is not accessible to you then email me and I will 
share my notes with you on the pattern. But the pattern, um, yeah, the pattern was a little loosey goosey in the beginning for me. Um, but I, again, like I love her designs. I think her designs are really beautiful and, uh, yeah. Anyway, that is my spots. Okay. One other whip, no, two other whips. And then I'm going to show you my, oh my gosh, I left it on the bed over there. I'm going to show you my Stephen West. <laughs> All right. I did put another pair of socks on the needles. This is one that I'd been thinking about making for quite a while. Um, this is uh, the Drea Renee Everyday Sock Pattern, which is the entire sock is made in a two by two rib knit and it has a flegal heagal, heel, <laughs> flegal heel works um a flegal heel which you know is kind of nice because you're just doing a bunch of increases then you're doing a bunch of decreases and yeah um i am knitting it out of the reason i've been wanting to knit this for quite a while not the pattern but with this yarn this is woolly mammoth yarn company fiber company she is a natural dyer and produces nylon free sock yarn so I really was interested in trying that. I think it's a really great um, thing, environmentally sound thing to do. Um, and she makes these really cute mini sets that are generally six colors. Uh, she has monthly updates, monthly sales. Uh, I bought a set of six. Is this all six? There's one missing. Oh, it's probably in my bag. Um, so I bought all, uh, um, a set of six and I am using these two, I'm trying to save these three for another one. These three plus this pale buttery yellow color um, for this set of socks. And what I did was I just knit with the color until I reached about 10 grams and then I switched colors because they're 20 gram skeins. So it should be good. We'll see. <laughs> I'll keep you posted. Um, I can't wait to block these because I really think the yarn is going to bloom and just really look amazing. So that is that. Is that. Um, one more whip. This is an old, old whip from last year and I have been working away on it a tiny bit. I have decided, I decided at the beginning of September to start shifting my knitting over into Christmas knits, whether it was Christmas knits for gifts or Christmas knits for me or my house. Um, and I um, pulled out this old Christmas pattern that I had been Christmas sweater that I had been working on. This is a shifty knit out of Christmas colors, um, not the main body, but um, the other colors are very definitely Christmas colors. Funny, uh, I don't. I didn't set out to make two sweaters that had a background color that was like a pale, pale pink. It was more that I was using yarn that I had on hand. So often the choices that I make in terms of my projects have to do with what I have on hand and also what I wanna make. So I'll find something that I wanna make and my first stop is always, let me see what's in my stash because surely I have something I can knit with this or maybe I just need a skein or two and then I'll have enough to make this project. Um, and in both of these cases, I saw this sweater pattern, loved it, started to look through my stash to see what I could make, what did I have that I could make with it, and this and landed on the, this combo, and the same with this. Um, I actually ended up buying one skein. Um, I bought one of the contrast colors. Let me tell you about the yarn, then I'll tell you, we'll get to that. The main color is this one right here. It is the colorway Patisserie by Stranded Dye Works. I bought this, I don't even know, like probably in early 2020. Um, maybe in, it might have even been the Stranded Dye Works birthday sale, which would have been 20, in 2019. Um, it's a colorway called Patisserie. It's been in the lineup of Stranded for a couple years now. And uh, yeah, I've just always really loved it. It's a nice pale blush with um, golden tones and brown speckles. It's really, really beautiful. My contrast colors, I seem to be missing one. The contrast color that I bought, and this I bought last time, last year, right around this time of year, is this color. It is called Christmas is Canceled. It is also a um, stranded dye works color. 
And uh, the green, I, I got in a mystery box a couple years back. This is a Garn Story color called Grinch. And then I have a brighter all over color, which I'm just gonna get the sweater up nice and close so you can see it. It's called Holly Drama. It's a Christmas color by um, Lavender Loon. And what I'm doing with those two multicolor red skeins is I'm alternating them. And the reason I'm doing that is because Holly Drama is in an older Christmas sweater that I made in 2019. So I used a portion of the skein and I wasn't sure I'd have enough. So I went ahead and bought um, Christmas is canceled and then I just decided to alternate them um, just so that uh, it's a kind of an even distribution of the colors instead of like knitting all in holly drama and then switching to Christmas is canceled like for the sleeves or whatever I thought this would be a better way to make sure that it's sort of a more equitable distribution of the colors yeah so, so I only have another um, from this green band, I do a red band, and then I do another green band, then the ribbing. So I'm, I'm, I'm progressing, I'm progressing. Should be done for Christmas. Might be done by Thanksgiving. Um, I, I would have been done probably if I hadn't done this next project, which is the Stephen West mystery knit along. Um, I am going to be talking all about it. So if I'm, I have not passed clue two. So clue three came out last night. Sorry, not last night. Night before last. Thursday night or early Friday morning. I haven't started clue three. So if you are, um, if you are wanting to be surprised for clue three, don't worry. I won't spoil any surprises about clue three, but if you are still working on clue two or clue one and don't want to be spoiled, I'm going to tell you where to skip to. It probably won't be very long, like a 10 minute or so chat about this project, maybe less, but yeah, skip. So a couple episodes back, I talked about my process for picking colors and I, you know, I hope that was helpful for you. Um, I talked about wanting to do a color workshop. I might be, um, you know, I might have some news on that soon. I'll let you know. Um, anyway, clue one and part, most of clue two, I'm on the short rows for clue two. Uh, here it is. Here's my sweater or my shawl. I did do a little steaming of the top part just so you could see that really nicely. Um, but wow, this shawl. So Stephen West, <laughs> every mystery knit along is like a workshop. It's like everything new he used, he learned in the last year, he puts together in a shawl and then teaches them to you. And um, the last couple years in particular, maybe even before that, there were a couple years I didn't do the mystery knit along, um, but the last couple years, uh, he's done videos, step-by-step -step videos that are so good and really help you avoid making mistakes. I only made mistakes when I, skipped watching the video because I was like I got this <laughs> but you know what I needed some I needed some guidance um, for example with the bobbles I ended up putting them too close together at first and I had to backtrack and rip out and that wasn't fun um, I did make one mod it's the only mod I made and I only did it because my friend Roz did it so she did it I saw it thought it was a fantastic um, idea and just copied her. Um, so the bobbles are meant to be all one color, but I used all five and just alternated them. And I really love the way it looks. Ah, so good. So good. This is so fun. Um, it's just, yeah, it's all I want to knit. So, um, I did great the first week I was done with clue one in two days, three days. And then I was able to knit on other things. So I finished the stockings and I, um, yeah, I, I worked a little on the Christmas sweater. This week though, no, because I went to Rhinebeck last weekend. So I am behind. I think I'll catch up though, because I looked ahead at Clue 3 and it doesn't look that bad. I think it's, um, it's not as much knitting time as Clue 2. Uh, it's all, it's just a couple things, so it's not so, so bad. Clue four, though, notoriously is the one that takes the longest. So last year when I did the mystery, when I did Slip Stravaganza, I, 
I got to the fourth clue, I saw that it was going to grow to, you know, hundreds of hundreds of stitches, like 900 stitches, more than that, I think. And I just put the thing away until after Christmas because I was busy doing Christmas knits at that point. So um, this year, those things are kind of colliding. And uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll see. I'm not going to push myself to finish, finish. Um, it reminds me, I am reminded of uh, playing video games with my sons. And because uh, when you have boys that are kind of nerdy and love fantasy and stuff like that, um, if you want to hang out with them, you learn how to play video games. <laughs> so I learned how to play video games. It was, I actually really loved it. Um, I love it. I love it still. I will still occasionally play some, uh, some really remarkable, like to me, if they're remarkable to me, I'll play. Um, but I am reminded that of, uh, when I, it, I'm known among my children for getting to the final boss and never beating it because, uh, usually beating the final boss means it's a lot of, extra work and strategizing and I'm all and there's no incentive because once you beat them what you you finish the game okay I finished the game here instead <laughs> that's how I feel about these though I do want to finish so I will finish I will finish okay yeah so that's all my knitting oh I have a tiny bit of spinning I just want to talk about spinning really quickly I don't have um, any spinning clips because I really didn't spin at all in the past month until last night. And the only reason I spun last night was because it is Stash Dash. Stash Dash started yesterday and it goes through Halloween. So it's a 10 day Stash Dash. And uh, I just said to myself, I've got to spin today. It's the first day of Stash Dash. And I, um, made one bobbin so this is the bobbin that i spun i didn't film myself spinning at all i normally if you're new here i normally have a little clip of me spinning at some whatever i'm working on that month but oh my god is this not gorgeous look at those colors i love them it's sort of a dirty pink or like maybe would be better characterized as a mauve with some bright colors it's like bright purple kind of looks like my shawl it's kind of the colors of my shawl. It really is. Um, this is the fiber. This is what the fiber looks like. I'll give you a side by side. The colorway is called Prairie and it is by Kim Dyes Yarn. So Kim also dyes fiber. I've only bought a little bit of yarn from her, but man, when she puts fiber up, I can hardly contain myself. I almost always have to buy some. I have a bunch of her fiber in my stash and I've spun so much of it. it I love the way she dyes fiber. I just love it. Um, this is a Pullworth Silk Blend, an 80-20 blend. And my intention is to do a three ply because generally, with silk in the mix, um, I will spin very thin. And I, if I do a two ply, it'll end up being a lace weight. So I would prefer to do a three ply so that I have like a fingering or heavy fingering or maybe even a light sport weight. Um, so yeah, I've spun one bobbin. I have uh, five to go because I'm doing two skeins. I bought eight ounces of this color at some point in 2020. Um, I have a ton of fiber. If you watched my Rhinebeck episode, you saw that I bought some fiber, but before that was Tour de Fleece, and I won the grand prize from Green Goat Ranch and Wool for the Dame, um, which was a lot of fiber. So I have lots of delicious fiber to dig into, as well as before Rhinebeck, I was at a virtual knit and escape and I bought fiber there too. Um, I bought some really special fiber. It looks like a lot, but I think it's only eight ounces. Is it 10 ounces? I bought 10 ounces. Um, this is also pulver. This is very special fiber. I am so excited to spend this, but I'm a little worried I'm going to be kind of a little tiny bit bored <laughs> only because it's all one color, but look how beautiful it is. It's this beautiful, warm cinnamon brown. 
oh, it smells so good. This is 100% Polworth. It is from, if you've ever heard of Sea Color Yarn, which is also Polworth Yarn, um, that company, Nan of Seaworth, this is some natural fiber from her brown sheep, her Polworth sheep. I think, I'm not, I might, don't quote me on this, but I believe she is the very first farmer in the U.S. to bring Polworth and raise Polworth here in the U.S. Um, because I think Polworth are native to New Zealand or Australia, I'm not sure which. Um, but their yarn is so incredibly soft and durable. So this will definitely be spun up into a, yeah, a sweater to be treasured. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. Um, I haven't thought that far. It is just, ah, I'm loving having it. So yeah, this is this I purchased at Knit and Escape. Knit and Escape's vendor sessions are really fantastic. You really learn a lot. You can ask questions. Usually they're not too big. Like I found um, in the last Knit and Escape that I did, maybe the biggest spending session was like 40 people. It wasn't too bad. Um, and yeah, you get a discount code almost always, some sort of discount, whether it's free shipping or a percentage off or something like that. I don't remember if I, what the code was with Nan. Um, but she's one of those like really awesome farmers who sells their fiber in the form of yarn and and fiber combed top to spin and uh, just I love supporting farmers like that the rest of what I'm going to show you is going to be stuff I got at Knit and Escape it's not everything I got at Knit and Escape because some of it isn't here yet um, but some of it is uh, and some of it is somewhere else either I've already worked with it or something I yeah, I'm not going to commit to saying this is everything. Um, oh, that's not it. Talking about far farmers who love their sheep and are here for the sustainable practices, both um, and humanitarian practices towards animals and all of that. Tammy from Wing and a Prayer Farm has been at every knit and escape that I've gone to and I bought this beautiful blue toned yarn. It's like, um, I think it is, it's a light worsted. It's called the Happiest Yarn. It is a blend of Shetland, Clune Forest, and Cormo, all her sheep. Um, it's spun together to create a uh, four, four ounce, 300 yard skein. Yeah, it is so soft and look at the drape. You can see when you hold the skein, if it holds itself out or curls like that, it's going to be really beautifully drapey. I bought a sweaters quantity. Don't know what I'm gonna make. This is going in the stash. I'll figure it out. Um, but something, something really, really delightful. Lobby and May was at the knit and escape as well um and she offered free shipping which for us people free shipping is a big boon um i've been dying to try this um helix and felix yarn for such a long time so i bought two skeins of this which is a sweaters quantity um that i'm going to hold together with some melted not melted some surrey lace weight that I have that is a really similar color. So I think that's going to be pretty special. I don't know what I'm gonna make either. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna share what I'm gonna make because I don't really know. Um, but yeah, this is uh, just FYI, this is a lace weight. Um, this is the colorway Wisteria and the difference between Felix and Helix is that Felix is a white base and Helix is a gray base. Uh, it is a blend of Falkland Merino and Gotland wool. So pretty. I love it. I love it. I also purchased, <laughs> cracking myself up right here. I think I know what I'm going to make with these, but I'm going to, I want to think on it a little longer before I uh, come to a conclusion. So uh, Amy makes a line of yarn uh, inspired by 
inspired by a filmmaker, an anime filmmaker, um, Miyazaki. And I had purchased this before. I think this is having trouble reading. Yeah, this is Howl and Sophie. So they're all purchased by those uh, films that Miyazaki made. I have purchased this before. I made a sweater for my granddaughter out of it. Um, but at the time that I purchased what I think was a worsted weight in this color for her, I bought a skein of the other colors that Amy had in sport weight. So I decided to complete my sport weight collection of the Miyazaki colors. <laughs> so I bought three others. Well, I bought Helen Sophie again. Um, and this one, this one is amazing. I just love it so much. It is um, Chihiro and No Face from Spirited Away, from the film Spirited Away. This is from Howl's Moving Castle. And then this one is Calcifer, which is also from Howl's Moving Castle. But it's like a pink to red orange uh, tonal skein. Yeah, so I got these three. I already have Ponyo and Susco. Um, there's one other color that's kind of neutral, which I did not buy. So Ponyo and Susco is a peach, mostly peach and sort of seafoam green color. So yeah, I have enough here to do something. I just have to figure out what that something is going to be. Um, one more, one more. How are we doing on time? Pretty good. Awesome. Um, I participated in the Ching Fiber Birthday Package giveaway. It was a pretty good deal. You got a needle um, and three skeins of yarn. And there was something else which I don't see in here. Oh, some um, a notion. And in my case, it, it's a yarn guide for... I haven't tried it yet. But a yarn guide for holding multiple strands. So oh, yeah, try that out. It's so interesting. I had said on my, and then you also got the tote bag and um, three skeins of yarn, which I'll show you. Take them out of the shocking colored um, <laughs> tote bag. You know, I mostly knit with fingering weight. Um, and yeah, I mostly knit with fingering weight. Occasionally I'll do with heavier weight, a DK weight. And so, in the notes section, she said to put what you wanted weight-wise. So I put fingering weight, and I also wrote, I love bright colors. And this is what they sent me. Two skeins of DK weight and a chunky weight novelty yarn, which I'm not mad about because this is going to be used in one of my stocking patterns. It's going to make the most fantastic intarsia something. I'll show you that when I get there. Um, <laughs> and then I got these. I mean, of course. All right, this is a little bright. This is the colorway Pika, which I think is inspired by Pikachu of uh, Pokemon. And uh, then I got this dark gray mixed with uh, like a speckle blue and red speckles, like a variegated gray, blue, red. Um, it'll make a great hat. They're both DK. And this is the colorway Obsession. Um, so actually, you know what? Both of them will make really good hats. I like to make a lot of hats around Christmas time for gifts. So yeah, I mean, look, the birthday present, I mean, the thing that cracked me up too was that um, the needle I got is for fingering weight. It's size, a uh, US size one and a half or 2.5. It's a chowagoo, which I'm thrilled about. Um, and it's 16 inches, which yeah, that'll make a really small hat. But that this needle size does not go with these yarns. But it's fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. I can imagine. Like, they were really, really bombarded with orders. Um, and I can imagine that it was very chaotic to pack um, all of these birthday surprises. It was a really great buy. Um, I got all of that for less than $50, um, including shipping. Like, it was a really, really good deal. If you like Ching fiber, I mean, Ching is usually known for brights and uh, her color sense is really fantastic. She speckles like there's no one's business. Really awesome yarn. I have a ton of it in my stash. I've knitted a bunch of things with it. 
Um, I would say like for any vendor that you're really, that you really love, sign up for the newsletter because that gives you inside track information on sales that are coming up and special project releases or product releases. Um, yeah, newsletters are really the bomb. Like I, you know, do most of my purchasing because of a newsletter, um, m way less than looking at Instagram or anything like that. So we did knitting, spinning, stash. I have a tiny bit of lifestyle. I've been trying to, um, you know, incorporate little things that have to do with, um, little things that kind of enhance your life, whether it's a skincare product or a home product. I have two things that I want to show you. One is kind of funny, so I'm going to show you that first. So, um, if you've been watching me a while or you saw me at Rhinebeck, I um, made this half and half wrap, um, two colors. It's, it has a whole story that I'm not gonna get into now. I will um, put either here on screen or in the description box, um, at least in the description box, the episode that I talk about this in. Um, but yeah, it was a whole process. I did a color block version and I ended up doing these three different colors, like sort of this gray black and then um, hot pink and bright yellow um, colors. So that's my half and half wrap. I have been keeping it on my couch and just throwing it on whenever it's a little chilly in the evenings. And uh, about two weeks ago, I was looking through Instagram and I saw these slippers by this company called Sorel and I love Sorel. I wear their boots, it's S-O-R-E-L. Um, I wear their boots mostly all winter. They're waterproof and they're stylish and they're comfortable, they're so comfortable. So they had slippers and I purchased them and when they got here and I was wearing them on the couch and I pulled this blanket, this shawl over me, I realized that my slippers match my shawl. <laughs> I did not do that on purpose. <laughs> I didn't look at my shawl and say, oh, these slippers match that. I'm going to get them. I, it was complete accident. I guess I really love these colors together. <laughs> oh my God. So, so funny. Yeah. So that's one lifestyle. They weren't expensive. And, um, the thing that if I can just talk about them for a minute, unsponsored, by the way, they have this rubber sole on the bottom, so you could really wear them outside if you wanted, but I haven't. Um, I think they call them Coffee Run, and if these colors aren't for you, they also have them in solid black, and I think there's a solid gray and other, like, hot pink, if you would prefer that, if that's more your style. They had, like, five or six other colors. Um, yeah. And they're not... I don't know, for what you're getting, it doesn't seem like it's fake fur, fake fur too. Uh, okay, the last thing I wanna share with you is my candle. Uh, this, oh my gosh, I had, had, had to buy this. Um, this is pot, a potter known as Janine Carson and she is in New York City. Um, and she does an entire series of tarot mugs. And so she started out just doing a couple she did like the magician, the high priestess, uh, a couple others. She started, I think about two years ago doing them and I got one and then I got another one and then I got another one. Um, and then she just, this fall went all out and just, I think she has like almost all the major arcana, which I think is around 28 cards. I'm don't quote me. I don't know my tarot facts. They're not at the tip of my <laughs> tongue. Um, and at the same time, she introduced candles and she was doing this holiday bazaar and I saw on Instagram this one. I really wanted it as a mug. So her mug, her tarot mugs are the same shape, but then there's a handle. Um, but she was saying in the, um, in the marketing that she was doing on Instagram was that once the wax burns away, you have a cup. It just doesn't have a handle. And I was like, oh, I really want the candle because it's the death. It's the death card. So I was like, I really want the candle for Halloween, but I really want a mug. 
So I just went ahead and bought it, and she said I was the very first person to put an order in for it, and uh, it surprised her. But anyway, I just, I love this. I love the size. I love the motifs. I love the extra um, decal or whatever that is that she's doing on the side with the glazing. It's just so beautiful. And the inside looks like it's going to be the same color as this, this like white color. I just love it. Love, love, love. And everyone is made individually. Um, so each one is a little unique. And yeah, I've talked about her work before. Um, when I bought some in the spring, maybe late last winter, early spring. But it's been a while since I've bought anything from her. Um, but I will put her in my, the description box uh, so you can, if you are interested in purchasing as well. She does ship. I think she ships worldwide actually but yeah it's been it's been really giving me like all those October Halloween -y vibes and I just love it um, I was also realizing like if I wanted to keep it a candle holder I could just put like a little votive candle in there after um, the wax all burns out so so yeah well that is my show for today my episode and i hope you enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed the footage and if you haven't had a chance i posted my rhinebeck weekend adventures last week so if you haven't had a chance go ahead and watch that it's not numbered it's not an episode that's numbered it's just called the rhinebeck episode and uh wow I look forward to sharing more with you soon. I hope you're doing well. Please stay safe and healthy and have a good couple weeks. I'll see you soon. Bye. I thought you might enjoy seeing some little furry farmers at work. So this is a up in the walnut tree. This is a little squirrel who shakes the branch, branches of this massive tree and makes the walnuts fall. And then down here, let's see if I can find him. There's another guy, he's not here now, but he was here a few minutes ago. I think he, he's run up a tree because of my cat. I think he's in this tree here. Um, but he was roaming around the bottom here, picking up all the nuts. It was very, very funny, very cute. Little furry farmers. I found the other farmer, there he is. Roaming around picking up all the nuts. 